Hi everyone. Hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, yeah, so thank you for, for joining another uh, Scottish Student Sport Bite Size Best Practice webinar. Uh, today's topic is embedding disability sport. Uh, and we're really pleased to be joined by uh, some of our partners from Scottish Disability Sport and, and some student from our network. Um, so our panel today, we've got Alison and Andrew from Scottish Disability Sport, who are regional development managers. Um, and we have Erin Swan, who's a second year student at UWS um, and also a, a student athlete as well. So we've got some great perspectives. Um, good to see Erin repping the UWS stash. Uh, I'm sure uh, there's a few on the call from, from the uni that will be pleased to see that. So, so that's a good start. Um, lots, of, lots of participants on the call today, which is great to see. Thank you all for joining us. Um, We've got nearly 50 on the call, which is absolutely brilliant. So great start to the day. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the call, um, please use the Q&A function um, and we'll get through as many questions as we can. Um, and if you have any comments, uh, if you'd like to contribute to the discussion, please do so through the, the chat function. If you'd like to contribute some best practice from your own institution or from your governing body, uh, then that's the best place to do it. I can see we've got a few governing bodies represented on the call today as well, so that's great to see also. Um, well, without further ado, I'd like to just pass over to our panel. Uh, we've got our presentation to go through, and then, as I said, there'll be an opportunity for, for Q&A and, and discussion. So I'd like to give you guys the floor. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen here. Uh, oh. So hello, uh, I am Andrew McKenzie uh, and I'm the West uh, Regional Development Manager for Scottish Disability Sport uh, and I'm here with Alison Shaw who is the Grampian Regional Development uh, Manager and we've also got Erin who is our fantastic athlete. Uh, we're going to be talking about embedding disability sport in colleges and universities. So a wee bit of an introduction. We've got our partnership that we have with Triple S, uh, the known sporting context side of things of what we do. Uh, that will be my bit. And uh, then we'll pass on to Alison to talk about the SDS current work with student clubs uh, and the steps to embedding disability inclusive sport. And then we'll go on to Erin uh, talking about the kind of supporting uh, students with disabilities to participate and compete and sports role in the student experience for student sports with disabilities. So just to kind of get the setting the scene in a way, just a wee bit of why we want to kind of support people with a disability to get into sport. Uh, I won't go through them all. I'll, I'm sure that these kind of will get passed on to you as well, uh, this um, presentation. But if you can see uh, the the 2% of the qualified coaching workforce have a disability, that's something that I'm sure is maybe a wee bit of a kind of shock for everyone and it's something that we are looking to change and improve on uh, and as you can see up at the top as well is seven in ten disabled people want to take part in more sport and physical activity so we, there is people who want to be a part of sport uh, and you know the effects of 82 percent of participants felt better 71 percent felt more confident and 67 percent got more out of life by being in sport and then we have another barrier, if you see at the bottom, that almost half of disabled people fear losing their benefits if they're seen to, ha uh, to be physically active. So these are the sort of things that we're in place to try and overcome these barriers, but we've also got people who want to be part of sport as well. So I'll go on to the kind of partnership that we have with Triple S. So opportunities, we are here working with, uh, with Scottish Student Sport to try and bring as many possible, uh, as much opportunities may it be, a, kind of being a, an athlete or participant, maybe be a coach a, or be part of kind of the governance side of things as well. We're here to bring as many opportunities as possible to support people with a disability and really support them through from you know, first year all the way up to fourth or even further on if they decide. A, the equality and equity side of things, we want to make sure that everything is fair and is equal a, for everyone a, with a disability that is for mainstream as well, so that everyone is getting the fair share of experiencing great a, sporting opportunities and great a, experience in being in sport. Future planning, a, we don't just sit back and 
be happy about what we've done. We always want to kind of build on what we're doing. We always want to progress and take that next step to make sure that everything is uh, is in place and it's all uh, happening. Raising the profile. So we want to raise the profile of clubs, uh, athletes and coaches that are involved uh, in disability sport in the uh, universities and colleges. We want to make sure that everyone's getting to know what the good news stories are. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone is knowing what is going on throughout the whole country so that you know other people can learn it as well and take notes and then make it into what would be best for them in their uh, university and college. Uh, as well as raising profile, what we are doing as well uh, with Triple S and SDS to make sure that we are doing what we're doing. We're, we're always trying to provide and support as many people as possible. Uh, increased participation. Uh, so, as I said there, we want to make sure that people have got the opportunity to be part of sport, uh, people with a disability. Uh, so, if they want to take part in, say, swimming, we want to make sure that there is that opportunity to take part in swimming and represent uh, their university and college. So that they are getting again that equal share of being able to represent and show off kind of idea of how good that they've got their skills and how they want to be participating in. Uh, sustainability again, that's the same with the kind of future planning. We don't we just sit still and you know if something's went on and it's going well, we just don't leave it. We want to build on that. We want to make sure that sustainability is there for other new students to come in. Uh, and experience the, the great experience that they get in sport. We want to make sure that we are building on that sustainability so it's always going to be there uh, and there isn't really another thought. We're always building on what we're trying to do. Embedding inclusion, so the kind of governance side of things, we work with different clubs uh, and universities to make sure that is there inclusion in your, uh, your governance side of things, your committees uh, and your development plans as well uh, and is it going to be an easy process for people to come in and get the experience from ourselves and other regional managers uh, from Triple S to make sure that that is in, in there and you're supported. Pathways and scholarships, uh, again, that's important as well. We want to make sure that we are promoting uh, athletes who are coming through the pathways who are doing really, really well on a European or a national uh, and getting the scholarships to get them supported and building what they're doing to hopefully potentially reach Paralympics kind of standards as well, so that they are getting that opportunity to represent the, their country as well. So that's another big thing that we're always in partnership with, we're always in communication with to make sure that we know who where the uh, athletes are and as uh, students and how we can support them. Uh, coach education and CPD. Again, we, we're always working in partnership with that because we've got our uh, UK D Disability Inclusion Training, which is a great course and hopefully maybe a few more few people in here that have been on it and how we can, you know, support uh, club coaches uh, if you've had experience or if you've not had experience about how to uh, put on a session that's in your club uh, and how we can help with uh, coaches into different other kind of uh, courses as well with uh, inclusion them. And resources. Uh, we always try and share the resources to like our uh, club inclusion paper with what we've got, which we'll be promoting uh, to help you help clubs to bring more uh, athletes and participants into their club and showing how we can support them as well in that sense. And we've also got online opportunities as we are in this kind of COVID climate at the moment. Uh, and that goes range from YouTube where we've got various different videos about different uh, participants being involved and again resources of like athletes like Erin just to give uh, that wee bit of experience of how you can support people and what you've written, what stuff that they used before and again Triple S just being really kind of supportive and uh, using their resources to really bring everything together uh, and I'll go on to the next bit with the non-sporting context so the kind of degree program content we work with your lecturers uh, and your kind of your student kind of unions as well, just to make sure that about talking about modules, how we can support them and, uh, you know, coaches who are coming through, teachers that are coming through, I've got that support and that um, experience of how to put on a session for people with a disability. Increasing enrolment, so we want to see more people with a disability being in various different programmes. It doesn't need to be sport specifically, it could be, you know, something that they want to do in the future, maybe a teacher or if they were to do English kind of journalism and that but still trying to link them into sport as well because they will have interest in sport and how we can make sure that they get 
that full, again, student support experience as well as being a student into another kind of module. Partnerships, we are trying to work with, we've got external people as well, working with uh, ourselves uh, and Triple S and the universities and colleges lecturers, maybe your governing bodies, or it could be different other organisations that are disability orientated. Uh, communication, we've got our, again, that's through social media, it's through talking to each other, it's phone calls, emails, newsletters, whatever you think, we do them. And we always try and promote uh, and make sure we're all updated with everything. Uh, development plans, again, we're, we're not just standing still watching, we're trying to build on what we're trying to do. We're trying to have a three-year programme, four-year programme, all these sorts of things that we've got short-term goals and long-term goals and how we can get to that, those stages by working together. And engagement days, we, we've got you know various different events. We've got the great opportunity here as well to speak about our partnerships and what, what you can, how our kind of experience can be shared to yourselves to develop maybe your club or bring more people in to support and knowing what's out there as well with different contacts. So yeah, th these are the sort of things that we have got in place and we're more than happy to try and help as much as possible. I will pass on to Alison now. Hi guys, so um, sorry, I've got a bit of an echo, that's, that's better. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of take you through what we currently do with student sports clubs. Um, and just to, to give you an idea, if you're not already engaged with um, the, the partnership that we have with Triple S, um, that, you know, that's something that will be offered to you. So at the moment, um, each regional manager for Scottish Disability Sport is partnered up with their equivalent at Scottish Disability Sport. And um, we've got a massive focus on um, at least one uh, education establishment within each of our kind of regions in Scotland. Um, so we're doing a lot of work with those uh, universities and colleges and um, in within that we're, we're working with the student sports clubs. So um, one of the things that we do offer is kind of bespoke support because you know there's not one size that fits all. Um, you know when, when we look at athletes we're looking at a person-centered approach because no two people are the same and it's the same with um, the colleges and universities. No two institutions are the same. No, no two institutions are built alike. You know, that we've got, you know, ancient universities that have been hundreds of years old and we've got very modern facilities as well. Um, and so the support that we offer is completely tailored to, um, you know, how many students they have with a disability. What kind of sport clubs do they offer? Um, what kind of facilities do you have? Do you have accessible facilities? Do you have a partnership with your local sports clubs? You know, there's so much, um, so many variables that everything is very, very much um, bespoke um, and that's for the colleges and universities and for the athletes and the participants that are coming through um, and we're there for you know the entire time of somebody's sporting journey from the first time they get involved in sport until they decide that they don't want to take part in any sport ever again and um, which rarely happens because we always seem to rope them into something else like we've done with Erin today. Um, Athlete transitions is a, a big sort of way that we we support so if we're looking at um, youngsters coming through schools um, into colleges and universities and um, we look to make sure that their experience that they've had at home um, in their home clubs is replicated when they go to their uh, respective college and university and that might be um, that they might stay at the same club that they've always been at or if there's a, a university or college um, club that they will then progress on to um, that they ha are given a smooth transition and they're being um, made to feel welcome and inclusive included within those sessions um, and sometimes there's things we need to do about logistics you know if you look at a swimming club for example you've got limited lanes um, and it may be that you've got a swimmer who has a particular impairment where they may not swim as fast as everybody else and how do we kind of look at making sure that they can still get in and do um, the same kind of sessions as everybody else but maybe in a slightly different way or you know maybe in a tailored way for them um, so athlete transitions are very important, not just going into university and college, but actually coming out of it as well. Um, because we don't we want to avoid that drop off that we sometimes see between school and university or college and then you know leaving a uh, tertiary education and, and going into the world of work. So um these are key points for us to kind of make sure that we uh, we offer support to the clubs and to the, the athletes. Um, training and education, Andrew's already mentioned, um, you know, disability inclusion training is our go-to. It's a um, multi-sport introductory workshop that enables you to develop tools to make inclusion uh, a little bit easier to embed within your clubs. It just kind of takes away the kind of scariness of it and, and gives you a bit more confidence that, in the tools that you have in your toolkit. Um, 
I'll, I'm not going to try and do a massive plug for this, but um, we've been working really hard on an e-learning module. Um, so it should be released very soon. We're just working out a couple of bugs in the system. Um, but it's uh, around about an hour long and it's very much interactive, loads of videos and quizzes and things. Um, and it's available through the Brightspace platform through Sports Scotland. Um, and it's completely free of charge. Um, and we're looking to make sure that that gets rolled out as far as possible because it's a really good um, it's a kind of a pre-disability inclusion training level, but it introduces a lot of the concepts that are within the course. And it's because it's so accessible, we hope that that's going to make a huge difference um, to how many clubs can open themselves up to be more inclusive. Um, and hopefully a lot of uh, the people on this call will, will be interested in taking that forward. Um, as Andrew mentioned as well, resources. Now, a lot of that comes with this bespoke support. So um, if, for example, an athletics club needs um, a particular piece of equipment. Um, we can look at rallying around with other clubs that we work with and trying to source that piece of equipment or get funding for that particular athlete to get their own equipment. Um, it could even be access to coaching plans from other coaches or sharing coaches knowledge. Um, yeah, so that, you know, any resources that we have, anything from YouTube links, like Andrew said, to, you know, thousands of pounds worth of botcher ramps and whatnot. So we're there for everything. Um, and then finally, the links with inclusive community clubs. Um, so we recognize that not all institutions are able to offer everything to every student and so we hope that the the student unions and the sports um you know the sports departments within the universities and colleges will be able to support us in signposting um and supporting the athletes within a community club if the institution can't offer so things like um where i'm from in grampian um we have quite a, a well-established wheelchair basketball team um, and obviously it's something, you know, there's not a, enough of a population to establish something like that specifically within either of the institutions because the same people would be probably going to Grampian Flyers Wheelchair Basketball Club anyway. So rather than, you know, duplicating things, we just simply um, would signpost them there and make sure that the um, sports presidents are aware that this particular student is taking part with this club and they're doing quite well because they're going to national competitions. Um, so that's kind of how we how we work with them at the moment. Um, if I can get Andrew to click on, that'd be wonderful. And uh, the steps that an institution can take in embedding disability sport to their offering, I'm just going to let get Andrew to click up all the options. Usually we ask for audience input in here, um, but I'm just going to let him click them all on. Fab. There we go. So. Um, one of the first things is imagery. It's something that we find is quite powerful. Um, you know, when you are advertising, in fact, when most clubs come to us and we say, oh, do you take people with disabilities in your club? They say, yeah, 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 we're totally inclusive. But nowhere does it say that they're inclusive. There's none of, there's, you know, they, they have the best intentions and we totally understand that they will do everything they can to include someone. Um, but people don't know that they exist. So imagery is a, a very powerful tool um, and, you know, if you are designing posters or you're putting things together for your student brochures for that whole student experience, actually having some images of a person with a visible disability, so something you can see, um, taking part in sport does so much more than actually stating, you know, that you're inclusive or even, you know, that you've just got inclusive on your plans in the background. Um, your explicit advertising is again something that that needs to be um, addressed sometimes because um, if a person with a disability wants to go and take part in sport, um, they might look at you know all the different options. They might go, oh, you know, I really like archery, but you know, it doesn't say anything on the the material that it's it's for me, so I won't go. Um, even though archery is probably one of the most accessible sports that you can get. Um, so, you know, thinking about that, putting a picture on of somebody with a visible disability, and actually telling people on your advertising material. You know, our sports club um, or our sports clubs are accessible for everybody, um, you know, regardless of disability or ability level. And, you know, that just it, it kind of breaks down that barrier. Um, ongoing training and education. Yep. Um, I think we kind of covered a lot of that anyway, but just making sure that you stay abreast of, of the developments and, and new coaches coming into your clubs, um, you know, because we know that there's a huge turnover because a lot of the student clubs are served by students as coaches so making sure that they get the same access to training and education and support um, embedded within your strategies is a huge uh, a huge kind of a uh, turning point as well you know we find that on the surface yes clubs will say that they're inclusive and yes they will be inclusive but if that committee changes 
um, or you know all those students move on or that club gets disbanded and then restarted within a, another time frame um, you know that kind of that work that's already been done is is lost um, so actually having something in your development plan or in your strategic plan or in your club handbook or in your constitution that says that you will be inclusive and this is how we're going to do it um, just writing it down means it's something you have to try and achieve so um, it, it helps with commitment definitely um, an inclusion forum and um, developing an inclusion forum or some sort of accessibility forum or a well-being forum you know some sort of platform that you've got to discuss any needs that you have um, in a shared audience I think works really really well um, I know that um, I, I'm working with um, Robert Gordon University quite closely just now um, with Ailey from Triple S as well and um, we've managed to get a seat at the table on their well-being forum and that's going to be our kind of talking shop for let's just make sure this is keeps getting driven home um, and uh, and make sure that we we keep achieving more um, and we've got it in strategies there as well and that's our forum for discussing those strategies um, and I guess that you know the most important thing at the end of the day is ask your students if you know that you have students with a disability within your education establishment um, you know find out what they want um, because ultimately you could put on you could say oh yeah we're going to put on a botcha club or we're going to make our archery session super inclusive and absolutely nobody wants to go because actually they really like swimming and athletics and they want to play bowls instead so you know don't put all your effort into something that might not come to fruition do the homework in advance and uh, and find out what people actually want um and i think those are the things that we've found you know that's not an exhaustive list there's so much more that you can do you know every every little thing makes a difference um but these are the kind of main things that we pick up on the, the key themes time and time again um where people can make a difference um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our lovely student para-athlete, Erin, and she's going to take us through some of her experiences. Hello. Um, so is it, just ex is it just experiences in general? Okay, there we go. Got it. Okay. So with um, so supporting students in university, I like I agree with what Alison just said about the explicit advertising, um, because that having images that centrally say that this is a sport that's easily accessible for everyone and there's bit like promotion of if someone's shown with a disability on the website that I think for me anyway that made me go oh that means that I can go to this and I don't and it's not the awkward asking of is this inclusive do it is, are you able to do this and it's like no we do this and we're, you're more than welcome to come along um, and along with that having like certain adaptations to do with the sport so and like talking with SES and saying do you need like watcher ramps like we, you can help with that and just like different adaptations so it doesn't feel even though we, the student might be doing something different compared to everyone else they're still participating in the activity and they're still getting that enjoyment out of it even if they're doing it a little bit differently um, and ensuring accessibility so just ensuring that any of the gym halls that they need to get to if there's somebody in a wheelchair make sure that there's an entrance for them to get in so they can participate um, and so there's not that need of like you need lots of planning to get in this really hard building and um, so just kind of where the sports venue is and to have a point of contact not even just even before you start the sport and um, just somebody to talk to and say hey can I get some more information about this? How is it run? And um, do I need to do anything? Just kind of like general stuff for a point of contact. It's also nice just to have someone to talk to before you go into a new sport, just so you can get your bearings, get your ground, and find out what's happening with that. And it was me again. <laughs> a lot of me in these holes. Um, so what role? So it's a form of relaxation for me even though getting up at five isn't the most relaxing thing in the morning. Um, it's a time to like step away to focus on something else for a couple hours even. Um, and it just kind of gets your mindset, kind of brings you down a wee level as like, right. It's it is quite relaxing, I find it relaxing. Um, it's a good form of socializing, um, especially during like um, this pandemic that's been going on. I was able to see at some point um, part of my team at South Ayrshire and it was good to just chat with somebody else that wasn't like on a webcam it was really good and it's also just in general a good way to meet people just general meeting your friends I've made lots of new friends through different sporting 
um, events. Quite a few of my close friends that we all keep in contact now. We have a group chat. It's great. <laughs> um, so it's also a group. It's an amazing break from studies. Um, absolutely amazing break because you've been sitting there. You're writing an essay and it goes on forever. And you're like, oh, I get to go train now. And it's a completely different thing. Um, if anyone's been with me at swim competition recently, you've seen me typing at a laptop sometimes. And sometimes if university and sport fall into one, but no, it's definitely a good break from studies. It's also a sports and a reason form of exercise. Um, and it also has brought me lots of new experiences. I've been able to go to Barcelona, which I never thought would be possible. I went to Barcelona with sports. I've met, I went to a summer camp nearly every year. I've tried archery. I tried canoeing, even though I just went in a little circle. Um, it's just it's a good way if it's a good way to find new sports and new friends and have new experiences and that's me <laughs> uh, this is just a, a kind of contact map uh, of everything of all the rdms that are in uh, across scotland so as you see we, we are everywhere pretty much <laughs> we are we're across the whole country so more than happy for you to take a photo of this than now, uh, but I'm sure we'll be able to pass this uh, presentation on to Neil. He will send it out to everyone who's here today as well. And please, please don't be shy in asking us and contacting us or uh, try to bug us in any of that because we are here to be bugged and we're more than happy for you to bug us about everything that, uh, that you're curious or, or got any kind of uh, questions for disability sport. And I believe that is us so thank you very much for uh, having us and if there is any questions if we've got time more than happy for you to answer uh, for us to answer amazing thanks thanks to all of you that was that was excellent um so much information there so yeah i'll definitely uh, be able to share that presentation with everyone that's on the call today um and really informative so thank you all for for contributions so far um, there's a few questions coming in. There's a few comments, which is great. So for, for our attendees, if you do want to ask a question, use the, the Q&A function. Um, take that first one just now, actually, from Kevin. Um, so what would be the expectations that a club will need to have in place to establish a uni college partnership? So things like PVG and safeguarding, codes of conduct, this sort of thing. Um, maybe Alison or Andrew might be better to answer that one. Yeah, I'm quite happy to kind of go with that one. Yeah, I think those those would be quite standard expectations from a club um, before we would look to kind of part them on. Um, what we would probably do is match up the club with one of our local branches of Scottish Disability Sport um, and get them affiliated through there. And that would almost give us like kind of a gateway to signposting students through to those clubs. Um, and then it would just be a, a very, I guess, informal conversation with um, the sports presidents to start with to um to introduce the club and um and then we kind of look at you know where we how we signpost students on and what kind of support we we look for from the institution that's great and um and i guess just to add to uh the, the end of the presentation as well if if people are looking to get in touch with you guys at sds they can always go through our regional team as well um so remember to reach out to your, your rdc so myself or megan or ailey uh, and we'll be able to help support that as well um good question in from from ailey snedden um have you had more success with wider sports union wide approaches or on individual club basis so in terms of probably engaging students um sort of facilitating change um is it is a have you guys felt more success from working with sports unions or with, with individual clubs? Um, personally, from, from an RGU point of view, because Ailey and I have been quite focused on that, um, I think a whole university approach is really quite key. Um, I think we need the backing of the sports presidents. We need the backing of, you know, all the powers that be to really drive home the message. Um, although, you know, if, if that support isn't there, um, you know, if we if we're not quite infiltrating that at that level yet, um, we love to work with individual sports clubs just to get the ball rolling because every club makes a difference. Yeah, I totally agree, Palace. And there it is. Like for example, if you because we had an open day uh, support over at Glasgow Uni, and then met clubs there. And if I, if I was going through them one by one, that'd be quite something. It'd probably take up the whole year, <laughs> to be honest. So, but having that approach of the whole. 
uh, uh, student uh, union wide would be great and it really kind of hits that target audience for everyone being there. Yeah, and that's an interesting point around the sort of open days and the, you know, sports fairs and these kind of things. Is that, are you guys regularly at these events? Are you, um, I know I went to Heriot Watt last year and um, the local branch of, of disability sport was was there represented and that was great to see. Is that something that you're you're quite happy to do more often? And uh, to help raise awareness at that point? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're if, if you are interested for us to come along to your kind of a uh, student open days or your kind of uh, yeah, any kind of engagement days, we are we are happy to be there and you just get in contact with us to see if we're available that day or during any point of that week. Um so yeah, please don't hesitate to ask us because we would be more than happy to put up our stalls and have a laptop to show a wee presentation about what's going on, showing athletes like Erin herself uh, doing her bit and uh, just to kind of show what students can do. And as we say at uh, SDS, it's not their disability, look at their ability, look at what they can do and what they can bring to your sport kind of idea. So that's, that's what we're all about. Brilliant. And then, um, Erin, just to come to you and um, just to think back about you, how you got involved in sport in the first place, what was the kind of those first steps to, to get involved in sport? And I guess, how was how did you find the kind of transition from, from youth sport through to, to student sport? And, and maybe what's your kind of long term plans within sport? Um, I think, how did I? Yeah, starting swimming, it was swimming lessons. Um, and um, my coach recommended me to um, an amazing coach, Carolyn, in Wishaw, Clyde Valley Beavers, an amazing club. And from there, um, it was like, it was just, it was once, twice every week, I'm sure. And then I started, like, I went to a swimming gala for the first time and was absolutely terrified. Didn't know what I was doing, where I was going, <laughs> didn't know what was happening. Um, and then through, I think it was a couple of years, um, and then I started to get into more mainstream swimming um, with like people like my age and swimming with different um, year groups. And then I went to Scottish National Squad, um, which is um, like harder training again kind of thing. Um, and it's just, it was I, honestly, it's like it's felt like ages ago I started swimming, even though I think it's only been about seven years. Um, but the difference between just starting and then like now is insane. Like I was like, oh yeah, I'll just do this as a hobby and it's going to be great. And then cut to like five years later and I'm getting up like five, six days a week to go to training. And even though like it's the difficulties risen, it's not got any less fun. Like I said, even though I complain about getting up at five in the morning, it's still fun. <laughs> Because you get to like chat with your mates in the morning and you get to see you get to be with the same people over and over again and it's like it's like a family like even though you might not see each other or you see each other a lot it like the whole kind of sporting community is a family so i've really enjoyed that aspect of it and there's there's a question here from rebecca sitting for someone who feels like they don't know where to start what would you recommend and we'll maybe come to, to alison and andrew after you erin mm -hmm. Um, so for where to start, it would I would just kind of look like look around like look around on the internet and see if they like the I know SDS have like different events sometimes, um, and sometimes they have like different open days and just like if there's one near you, just kind of like pop along to them because they're like they're lovely people. They love to sit and chat. Like I can chat to them for ages. <laughs> um, but no, they're lovely people and even if like you don't know what sport to start in just say okay these are my interests and like oh well you may start an archery just to see how it is and if that's not a sport for you you can try a different one um and yeah just like that just see if there's any events that you can attend or just see if there's anyone in your local area that you can just drop a wee email to and yeah i think because there's lots of pathways so i think that's one of the, one of the good ones Uh, I think for ourselves, uh, you've kind of got, I would say, three key kind of contacts. So you've got, you know, the SDS, RDMs, you've got your Triple S uh, officers, and then potentially the governing bodies as well, your sporting governing bodies. They're probably the three, 
that you probably would like to speak to if you wanted to get something started. And then when you're linking in with three organisations, we are then here to, you know, if say for, for example, it's athletics, we would then know what athletics club you could go and ask for support um, and what kind of equipment you would think you might need to use and what experience they've had and, and you know, potentially even that club might come to or a coach might come to your session for a night or two just to kind of maybe go through some kind of training opportunities and what, what to kind of expect maybe. Uh, so I would say if you're willing to start off something, contact ourselves, Triple S and your governing bodies just to get a wee bit of a kind of idea and get the kind of juices thrown, uh, thrown into your kind of idea, that sort of stuff. I don't know if Alison has got anything more for that. Yeah, I think just the same. You know, I wouldn't even say you need to contact all of us, just one of us. We're quite a close-knit community, as, as Ed has kind of alluded to. Um, so, you know, once you get in contact with one of us, the rest of us kind of follow suit and get involved. So um, just reach out. We're here to support. You know, the, the more you bug us, the more we get our job done. So, um, so yeah, bug us. And um, I guess you've touched on it there, but the questions come in um, from Kevin. And would SDS or SSSS have access to specialist equipment? Uh, the unis or colleges can borrow, for example, uh, athletics, racing chairs, race runners, these kind of things? Yeah, usually we can beg, borrow and steal from someplace. Um, usually it's, you know, on a, a temporary basis until a club can get its own equipment sorted out. Um, but for example, you know, I've we've been um, trying to get wheelchair racing established in Aberdeen for, for quite a while. And just out of the blue before Christmas, we had two girls come forward and be like, we want to be like serious wheelchair racers. So, uh, and thus when, well, we, we don't have like wheelchair at all in Grampian. Um, so uh, we had a plan to get chairs brought up from the borders. Uh, unfortunately, that's all fallen through due to COVID, but um, luckily we're, we're kind of working on funding for the, the girls to get their own chairs in the background. So um, fear not, there's a ton of money out there to get equipment. And then while we're waiting for equipment, we can usually get something sorted for you. Yeah, as well as there may be clubs out there who may be very, uh... If you've got a good partnership with them or you're really keen to help out and that sort of things you might have clubs who are really interested to help out and support because you'll, you'll realize with the disability sport community they're all very friendly and they're able to get a lot of things going pretty much so yeah that's great um and i'd also say i mean some of the governing bodies have their own kit as well so i know basketball scotland have their own wheelchairs for wheelchair basketball other governing bodies will will have other equipment so that's also another route to, to go down to, to get in touch with um, governing body staff um, and they'll be able to support you. And they all have regional staff as well. So again, if you need, need contacts for any of the governing bodies, give us a shout um, and we'll be able to connect you. Um, just, yeah, response there from Rebecca. Um, thank you. It's really interesting. Um, she's actually the captain of an archery club and looking to get started on being more inclusive. Um, and she's not sure what that first approach is. Uh, Rebecca, we can definitely connect you. Bill Hogg from uh, Scottish Archery is on the call, so um, definitely give Bill a shout. Um, I'm sure he's happy that I've name dropped him there. Um, and he'll be able to, to support with that and we'll be able to connect you. Um, really good question coming here, uh, directed to Erin, but I'm sure uh, Andrew and Alison can add some, some info as well. Do you know others with disabilities who don't want to take part in sport? And what do they perceive to be barriers and what are the reasons that some people might give for, for not participating in sport and, and physical exercise? Um, I'm trying to... There's all, mm, I don't... I'm not going to lie. I've not really met... The, I've, I've met a lot of people with disabilities through the sport, so I've, I've not met anyone who's not wanted to do it. Um, but I think when... I'm trying to think of... Um, I think one of the barriers is just like um, your own, I know one of the barriers with me when I was trying to get better and trying to get more into sport was my own confidence when it came to it, because there is that, uh, there was a whole thing <laughs> when I was like jumping from disability to mainstream sport and even, main, even disability sport, it was like, it was just a confidence issue for me. It was just kind of sitting there and going, everyone's looking, I can't, I walk funny. I walk with like a, my foot turns in and like everyone's staring and they're not, 
<laughs> it's just kind of more it's just kind of building your own confidence that was a barrier for me um, and I think it's another one of the barriers is just kind of thinking that this sport might not be inclusive and I think that's why um, it's a good idea for sports to try and and like invoke that whole let's be inclusive let's put it on like the posters or like whatever you do to advertise sports and um, just say it because it kind of brings that whole confidence to you when you see that oh that's inclusive and I want to try that so you know what let's go for it um I think I don't really know if too many barriers in my set that was the question wasn't it barriers yeah um from that's the only kind of barriers I can think of off the top of my head is just kind of your own kind of mindset when it comes to trying something new and trying something that looks absolutely terrifying because when you kind of come out the other side of it and you go oh I've just like dropped 12 seconds off a of time and like the grin on your face is like oh I've just overcame that massive barrier that's been holding me back for so long and it kind of just makes you want to keep going and pushing those barriers that even though you're scared of them you know you've done it once so you can do it and you can keep trying and keep trying and keep doing it again yeah i think just to add to some of those barriers you know um i guess from from another side you know we do a lot of work in trying to engage people in sport and they will come up and say well what about this and what about that um and i think you know you're totally right erin in saying confidence is an issue it's not always just confidence with an athlete or a participant um it's sometimes that there's parents holding them back as well and even at university and college age you know we still get you know if they're living at home the parents are no no I, you know i'd rather you didn't just in case it's not safe um you know and all you need to do is go and type into youtube and see um, wheelchair cross and you'll see that it's um yeah like what we're doing is, is relatively mild in comparison um and other things are things like access to equipment it's the logistical barriers access to facility um, it's not knowing that the opportunities are out there, um, which is where, why we kind of address the advertising material as well. Um, and if anybody paid attention to Andrew's um, statistics slide at the very start, um, it's like what 48% of um, households in poverty have someone with a disability living within them. So actually financial barriers can be huge as well. But I think that's where university sport offers maybe a bit of an opportunity because I certainly when, when I was at university, um, our membership for our student club was cheap as chips so you know it's um you can get access to some pretty expensive sports at a pretty knockdown price um as long as you're compared you know prepared to volunteer uh, and, and give up your time as well uh, to help out but um but yeah that's kind of my experience yeah i think again it may be people might not have the belief that they can do certain sports as well they, they, they just think nah, i can't do that and that's why they're maybe being disengaged with sport in general and it is just giving them that wee bit of confidence to be like you know what i think you'd be quite good because you might have the upper body strength to be uh, able to throw a javelin and all these sort of things that type of uh, idea and maybe opportunities and it's just saying well just come along to it and if you don't feel comfortable if you don't like it then at least you've tried the sport and maybe we can find another sport for you that that sort of thing that kind of personal kind of social a uh, social work side of things as well could really maybe help somebody uh, with a disability because sometimes you don't know with the kind of mental uh, you know the, just uh, they might not be in a certain good place because they might not have friends or anything like that so it's maybe offering that opportunity to be like we've got a team here who are really really good really good people and we want you to be involved in it if you're interested so i don't know if maybe that side of it could be is, could be a potential barrier as well I think it's uh, it's great that so many different sports have been name dropped on this call already and there's, there's so many more and it just shows you how many opportunities there are to to take part um, in different sports and and it is that like everyone can find the, the sport that they love and that they're they're able to do and they're passionate about and that's 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 brilliant um great question come in from Barry uh, Barry's at Cricket Scotland and um, so they're already doing a lot um, to uh, work with universities and um, but they're trying to develop their disability cricket champion clubs uh, so the question there is uh, what would be the best way for them to for them as a governing body to get students involved in our disability pathways uh, to universities and show what is on offer I think it's it's you know I think we can join the dots here. I mean I already work quite closely with Barry. Um, you know we've done a bit of uh, coach education stuff. So um, I think you know where where your where your key clubs you want you know you, where you want to target. Um, you know we can get in touch with us. 
we'll um, get triple S on the case as well. We'll find out where there's clubs that have capacity and um, and we can kind of start that conversation with them. I think it's just getting everybody around the table, isn't it? And uh, in this virtual world, it's probably a little bit easier just now. So um, let's, yeah, if you, if you want to do that, then get in touch and, and we can help you through that. Yeah, just just what Alison said. If there's if there's certain target areas that you're looking for uh, that you're interested in, then as I say, just let's join the dots and let's go for it. Let's get those meetings sorted and let's uh, take it to the next level. That's great. A um, couple of maybe quick questions around resources. So there's one around: um, Is there any social media resources that are, are they're able to share across um, social media channels? Um, and there was one around uh, are you able to sign post students to inclusive skating uh, to obtain support to get started maybe a couple of quick quick answers there uh, uh, on you go, Andrew. i guess for inclusive skating it will just uh, i guess it may be depending on your area because uh, i know there's there's a few clubs in the west that we can definitely link in with uh, so uh, it may be different in different areas. I don't know if Alison's got uh, clubs up your way that we can link in with. That we can do yeah, look into. yeah, we've got we've got clubs in uh, Aberdeen and in in Elgin as well. So there's there's opportunities. It's just it's based on interest. You know, if we if somebody comes to us and says, "I want to do skating," I have a disability. Um, we go right, okay, let's go and chat to the club, and um, and that's again, you know, that bespoke support that we don't um, mentioned earlier. That's where that comes into play. Um, in terms of the social media resources, um, we don't have a ready-made one-size-fits-all university college resource, but we do have a massive bank of images. So if you are putting something together, give us a shout and we can share, whatever, you know, pretty much every sport we've got an image for. And maybe not things like, um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the sports we maybe don't have, um, like, what was it, motorsport? Yeah, we probably don't have motorsport. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, some, you know, anything that's a bit more mainstream, we will have something um, that you can use that will be visual enough to um, to make it obvious that your session's inclusive. Yeah, we've got other, well, we've kind of got other kind of uh, basic training stuff as well, with our kind of inclusion activity cards. So we've kind of got them as well. So if you're looking for kind of, it's mostly kind of aimed at kind of primary school type idea, but it still gives you an idea of what you can do in your session to build up your confidence and make sure that I can, actually that challenge could be quite good in one of the sessions and how we can build on that. Uh, and we, we've got other kind of opportunities online as well. If there, and I'm more than happy, well, I'm sure me and Alison are more than happy to send links through just to give you an idea what's on our website, what's on Facebook, what's on YouTube as well, so you can get different ideas. Uh, and again, you can just get in contact with us about what resources that, that you might not see, but it might be on a government bodies website as well that we can definitely look into. Yeah, and uh, there's a question came in about how do we contact you for these resources. Um, so what I'll do is um, the last slide there had all the email addresses for regional staff. So I'll send that out um, within the next sort of 24 hours um, and uh, all the contact details for regional staff are, are all there. Um, probably got time for a couple more questions. Um, there's one there. How do you ensure working on disability sport campaigns that you have an intersectional approach? Um, so making sure that uh, we do cover all the different types and forms of disabilities and make sure that um, it's shown as we're making sport to feel inclusive uh, even before people take part. And as, I guess as well, is there, is there good examples of, of disability sport campaigns um, that we're aware of that we can signpost people to that are, are, are good examples of best practice of really getting it right and getting the messaging right? I think uh, there's a really good one with our colleague Cheryl over in Stirling. Uh, they did a, they've done a, they've been brilliant uh, with what they've kind of done, and we've got I think we've got a we've got a YouTube video about all the different things that they've had, uh, what what they've done pretty much and how everything's been inclusive, how they've got different sports and different coaches involved as well. So we're I, we're more than happy to send that over and it will give you a wee bit of an idea uh, and also different ideas from different local authorities and different kind of sporting opportunities as well. I'm sure Alison's done plenty of things with RGU. Uh, I'm looking to do various different types of opportunities with uh, City of Glasgow College as well as uh, Strathclyde Uni as well. So we do have 
approaches that we're looking to put in place with different uh, organisations, uh, with universities and colleges, and how we can get the best out of the, in that uh, organisation. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, I think one of the things that we've done within RGU was involve um, students with disabilities throughout. So there's students with disabilities that actually sit on our on the wellbeing committee um, as well, and and they get to have a say in it. Um, and you know everything that we do is um, kind of underpinned by you know our tagline and and being um, and you know creating all opportunities for people with physical, sensory, and uh, learning disabilities. So. You know, having that kind of always at the forefront means we don't forget about anybody um, within our population. Um, but similarly, you know, we have a survey usually that goes out um, when we're first starting to work with an, uh, an establishment just to determine who we're actually working with so that we get it right for that particular institution. Yeah, and I, I sit on the Sterling Disability Inclusion Forum um, and it's a really, really worthwhile group um, and we've, we're starting to make some progress. It's been tricky over the past year to make any sort of progress in anything um, and so we're not saying that it's absolutely perfect but it's definitely a good way of bringing together different parts of the university or the college. We have student services, we have the sports facilities, we have a sports union represented. Uh, actually on that one we have Fourth Valley Disability Sports sitting on that forum which is which is great um, and we're trying to do a little see where we can work more with the college there so it's just a, a fantastic way of bringing people together. And so if there are other, other institutions that are looking to set up something similar, then uh, story of the webinar, really reach out to us. We're here to help um, and we're more than happy to help you um, to, to share some best practice on, on how we can get that set up for you. Um, got one more question here. And so I'll give you guys a minute to think about it. It's come from Laura, who is, um, has actually just been appointed our disability lead for our, our equality steering group. Um, so looking forward to working with Laura uh, going forward. Um, she's asked what more can be done to encourage students who haven't taken part in sport before uni to get involved when they get there. So I'll let you have a think about that. Uh, I'm just going to check on some of the comments. Um, Gemma Lumsdain, um, fans favourite here at Triple S, she's uh, took part in our festive gathering a couple of years ago. Uh, really important that we try to support students with disabilities to get involved in uni sport, as it's a huge part of the experience, uh, which lots, lots of people missed out on. Uh, great point, Gemma. Um, from Ailey, yeah, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, saying thanks, Alison, and great to see you all on the panel. Um, good one here from Sean. Uh, so Tennis Scotland work with disability, Scottish Disability Sport. Um, they're very lucky to have someone like Gordon Reid um, who's done so well and is really one of the, the top performers in, in UK sport in the last decade, in my opinion. Um, so it's about making the most of, of these individuals and, and ensuring that the, the profile that these, these athletes get is kind of seized upon to make sure that we, we encourage more people. Um, to get involved. Um, another point yeah, from Kevin, um, all about signposting, having good discussions, um, important to do some practical activity in an environment where the students feel at home, perhaps facilitate, facilitated by community clubs. So again, there's, there's an opportunity there to, for student clubs to work more closely with uh, community clubs who maybe have a bit more of a, an inclusive uh, delivery model. Um, compared to some of the some student clubs um and yet a uh, final comment there from joe uh, at uws erin is a fantastic ambassador for team uws and has been fantastic to work with over the last two years so there you go erin if you weren't blushing already uh, it's a good shout out from joe um but yeah just to finish off i'll come back to that question from laura um so uh maybe we'll come to alison first what so what more can be done to encourage students who haven't taken part in sport before they become a student um, and encourage them to get involved? Yeah, I think um, one of the main things is communication. So, you know, make sure you find out who you've got that's coming to your university who might have a disability. Um, obviously, with GDPR requirements, we can't find out specifics, but, you know, you can find out how many people we've got, what kind of disabilities they've got usually. Um, and, you know, 
reach out um put things out with all those explicit advertising messages on them with that explicit imagery on them um celebrate the successes i know that um laura probably won't mind me actually mentioning that she won one of the um sports awards for rgu um and it wasn't like a token award because laura has a disability it was a an award because she was the blooming good swimmer um in, in her time there um and she thoroughly deserved it but actually having that you know the image of a swimmer with a disability receiving an award above so many other athletes that don't have disabilities is really powerful and I think that's really encouraging for attracting students to your universities who do have a disability um, you know a picture tells a thousand words um, just reach out tell people about it that's great. Andrew, what's uh, your thoughts on best way to engage students and encourage them towards sport? Yeah, basically everything that Alison said there. It's just really, it's just really trying to encourage more people to try it, try out maybe different sports, even in the kind of uh, your freshers week and everything, like what we were part of. It'd be great just to say that, you know, we are all inclusive. We want everyone to try out the sport and we've got opportunities to try for you to try out the sport we've, or even just saying you've got different links in with different organizations and clubs that are disability maybe specific or have inclusion opportunities and just really again communication and offering i can't just say i just can't say enough to be offering opportunities and even if you're looking to say if you are interested and you don't know how to go about it contact us and we'll, we'll find a way of what suits your club, your your uni or college that we can put on a certain session, or even if it is disability specific, and how we can fit them into the clubs and have different pathways as well, just so that you're not feeling alone. You don't feel alone because we're here to be to be your kind of rock in a way, if you want to say that. But yeah, you're not alone out there if you want to put these opportunities on and don't be scared because you've got nothing to be scared about. It's great fun. So you just got to try it and uh, and you'll enjoy it that's that's magic and Erin what's what's the kind of advice from you to people that maybe haven't been involved in sport um, but are considering it once they get to the, the college or university um, I would I'd actually agree with Andrew freshers week just try everything <laughs> honestly freshers week is such a laugh and if you take it in from doing a sport it's just a laugh it's just a laugh like I'm going to be trying hopefully when we get back to normal we're going to try some volleyball <laughs> at one point. We're going to try that, see how that goes. Um, no, but um, just see if they have it, if they have any like signage up or just any events. Because I know Freshers Week, you get emails like crazy. There's like, there's a paint, there's paintball, there's like, there's everything. Um, and I know sports are, they push that out there in Freshers Week. So um, try and do as much as you can. Freshers Week, maybe even after it ends, um, just try to get, Try everything, <laughs> try about everything. It might not be for you, but just try a bit of everything. See if you can find what you like. Um, and if you come to volleyball at, UW at UWS, you may see me just trying to play volleyball. For, you know, that'll be a laugh in itself. So I think if you're just up for a laugh, just give it a try and see what happens. That's brilliant. And just one last question for me, actually. And in terms of your own uh, sort of ambitions within swimming, Tokyo was maybe a bit too soon, but are you looking towards Paris at the next Paralympics or um, what's, I think, the, what's the plan? I think it'd be, a co it'd be a really cool goal if that would that would ever be one. Um, because what I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to specialise in one event just now, the 400 free, um, and that'd be the, the event that I lead with. Um, and I think long term goals, I think that'd be one of the best opportunities ever. Um, I do one of my goals is to try and. Um, make the finals again at British Paris Par Parachamps. I think that's the, name, the title of it. Um, to keep making finals for that, and if there's any Scottish nationals or snags, even try and make the finals for that. And it's just like keeping consistency with keep with getting in finals and really pushing to in the heats to make sure I get into those finals. Um, because I think that'll lead to bigger things. So that that's my that's my long term goals right now. Um, the short term goals is getting back in the pool, but we can't right now. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my long term goals right now. Sounds good. Well, we've got everyone here at Triple S and SDS supporting you. So hopefully we'll be able to come and see you uh, when you are competing at that top level. And we'll, we'll keep an eye out for you. I hope so. <laughs> but um, 
but that's uh, that's taken us uh, to the end quite nicely. So um, to all three of you, thank you so much for, for your time today. That's been really, really great to be a part of. Um, extremely informative. There's loads of information in, in this webinar. So I'll definitely be able to share the presentation with all the, the attendees. Um, and hopefully the phones and emails are off the hook uh, in, over the next few days and weeks with, um, with people getting in touch to, to get the support. So thank you again. Uh, thank you to all our attendees for the questions and the comments. That's been really useful. Um, and keep an eye out for future webinars from, from Triple S. Um, and yeah, enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Thank you.